Hey, welcome back. I thought I'd try something a little new tonight and put a little video of myself down there in the corner. If you like that, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, don't pay any attention to what's going on in the back. I'm, I'm trying to work out. I got a chroma, chroma key screen back there, a blue, green, uh, blue and a, a green screen. I'm trying to figure all that out. I'm trying to figure out if this is going to work, if this is a direction I want to go or not. But what we're here to talk about is this is the... Uh, what is this? The Wi-Fi Security Part 2. So you remember the edge router we've been working with, and I'm going to tackle the edge router series first. Now, when I do a Wi-Fi deployment, I really like client isolation. And what client isolation is going to do is going to block guests on the Wi-Fi from seeing each other, and you're also going to be able to block them from getting to your infrastructure devices. Now, the edge router, natively, the only thing we can do with this thing is we can block subnets and ports and things like that. It's got no client isolation. Now, I suppose that you could get fancy with firewall rules and really small subnets and VLANs to your heart content, you know, to your heart's content, but it would probably be funner to stick a knife in a toaster than to manage that if you manage to get it set up and working. So I don't recommend that, uh, but if you don't care about client isolation, and you kind of should, in my opinion, uh, then this this is going to work okay for you. So we're going to look at just the edge router settings. So if you remember this edge router, what we were doing last time is we were uh, doing firewall policies, and this policy, this block local that we created, doesn't let anything from ETH1 get to ETH2. So if ETH2 is going to be our, our public Wi-Fi, our guest, Wi-Fi, then we're also going to need a couple different rules created. We're going to need a rule that, do, that blocks any traffic from ETH2 from getting to ETH1. And, you know, we're not going to use anything on these other two ports, so we're not going to really worry about that at the moment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create another rule. And we're going to call this block... Local 2, default action will be accept, and this is blocking from ETH2 to ETH1. And basically what we're going to do is we are going to just copy this other rule and flop it, flop it around the other way. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. Edit this guy, put an interface in it. So our other one was ETH2 out, so this will be ETH1 out. We'll save that. Uh-oh. Save failed. Unable to connect to the router. Hmm. That was weird. I don't know if I should be concerned about that or not, but we'll keep an eye on it. So back to our firewall rules. We're going to do ETH1 out. Save that rule set. And once we get the confirmation that's saved, okay, I want to make sure that it actually applied to that interface. So then if we look at our other rule set we created, we blocked everything from 1.0 slash 24 to 3.0 slash 24, uh, ETH1 to ETH2. So we're going to create another rule, and it's just going to be opposite of this, and that, that'll get the desired effect there. So we'll edit this, and we'll add a rule. This is going to be block 3.0 from 1.0. 0 ETH2 to ETH1. The, oop. the action will be drop all protocols, establish new related. The source will be 192.168.3.0 slash 24. The destination will be 192.168.1.0 slash 24. We'll save that. So now we've got 
those rules that are pretty much mirrored. So we'll go ahead and save that. So now the next thing that we want to do, and we can see we've got all of our firewall rules. So now what we've got is when we've got an access point that's on ETH2 or anything else, it could be a switch going to wired networks. It could be a sw yeah, switch access point, could be cameras, could be whatever. So anything from ETH1 cannot get to ETH2 and vice versa. So but now what we need to do is we need to block anybody that's behind ETH2 from connecting to services on our router. So, and that would be on the 2.1 layer 3 interface. So how we're going to do that is we're going to add another rule set. <clears throat> and we're going to call this uh, block local SRV services. This is going to block ETH2 from connecting to router ports, uh, router management ports, and the default action will be accept. And so now these are local services, local packets. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure this in our interfaces. It's going to be ETH2 direction local. So That'll make sure that we're talking about local services on this firewall. So that's saved. So now we're going to come in here and we're going to add a new rule. We're going to call this block SSH. Drop all protocols. Source 192.168.3.0 to port 22. Establish new related. We forgot that under advanced almost. And that uh, will do TCP and UDP. And once we do this, the router will not respond to SSH requests from this subnet on ETH2. And we're going to add another rule block HTTP, drop TCP, UDP. Source 192.168.3.0, destination, port 80. And, I mean, you could just go on and on. You could block all kinds of ports, but I don't know what you've got going on your, your router, but we're going to block SSH, port 80, and port 443 so that those clients cannot get to the management interfaces of the router. Uh, there is a DHCP server that's set up on 2.1, but we're not going to block that. So that DHCP server will work, and I can actually show you that it is working because we have a device plugged in and these firewall rules are set up. So you can see we've got all of our rules here. We're going to save the rule, the rule order. And that's going to be good to go. So now you have effectively isolated whatever's on ETH2 from ETH1, and you've isolated ETH1 from everything on ETH2, and you've also blocked the clients behind ETH2 from connecting to our management interfaces on the router. So now if this were Wi-Fi, you would have you would have as much security as possible without client isolation. So when we get to the next video, which will be part three, that's where we're going to have that client isolation. So this will wrap up part two. And in part three, when we start out, we'll take this edge router and we'll throw an access point on there, and we'll, I'll show you how this this works. Just so you believe that it works, you know, we set it up, but it'll be nice for you to see it um, real quick. Since we're talking about that, we can go to DHCP. And if we look at this 192.168.3, look, there's one least. So you can see that that's a, that's a camera behind there. And if I open up the router, once again, don't ever use UBNT, UBNT. This is demonstration purposes only. I should be able to ping that guy. So from the router, I can ping it. 
But if I pull up my PC, I cannot because we've got that isolation going on. So those are the kind of things you want to see. But now, like I said, this is not true client isolation where the clients can't see each other. And I think that you should go a step above and beyond and do that. Especially if the Unify system does it so easily, it's a checkbox. And you'll see that uh, in the next video. So if you like the video, give a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. And I will see you at the next Wi-Fi security video. And there'll probably be some other videos in between there. But please comment, share, subscribe, give a thumbs up, and we'll see you soon.